guys uh, welcome back to our uh, youtube channel and uh, today i have hirusto uh, kyuchukovi from uh, germany and he is one of the famous linguistics uh, considered in the world about romani language and turkish language also and he is the leading expert in roma communities uh, culture and history uh why we considered uh, why i considered roma topic uh, today is the reason is that because they have a very deep connection with india and so i thought uh, to approach uh, sir to uh, ask his uh, point of views uh, a wisdom based and uh, intellectual based point of views on history culture and linguistics about uh, roma community so uh, sir i warmly welcome you on warman matters and genuinely i have a gratitude that you got ready from your such a busy schedule to give the interview and i will make sure th- that i give time to uh, give justice to your time and to the people also so starting uh, from i want to know what is the uh, language about the roma uh, what consists in language does it uh, is it similar like indian language or what is uh, very interesting about that Yes, hello to everyone <clears throat> and thank you for inviting me to give this interview. I'm very honored and uh, I think that uh, the people in India know something already about Roma in Europe. Uh, but maybe there are also young people who never heard about them and they don't know almost anything. So in this sense the interview I hope will give some light. um some information to this what are roma what kind of language they speak and what they, they what kind of uh, culture they have uh, let me first introduce myself my name is uh, christo kuchukov i'm originally from bulgaria but since 10 years i live in germany i'm a professor uh, in linguistics i defended my phd in linguistics in general linguistics from the university of amsterdam in uh, holland in the netherlands so after that i did uh, two other phd's in the field of education in bulgaria and uh, i was uh, promoted uh, to the professorship uh, in slovakia in uh, one of the universities so for last uh, 30 32 years i'm doing research in the field of romani language roma culture and roma history because all these three areas are somehow connected i have published a lot of articles a lot of books a lot of uh, journal articles studies uh, all over the world in united states in india in russia in europe so this is more or less uh, what i am doing at the time being uh, for the time being uh, i am a professor in one polish university in poland and uh, i teach there uh, romani language and intercultural education to uh, polish students so maybe we should start with the very first question who are the roma and uh, what is the connection of roma with yes, india yes 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 okay so Uh, what we know from the history uh, some uh, 10 centuries ago on the end of uh, 9th century and the beginning of 10th century uh, india was attacked by the muslims from northwest and the indian population which was in two states punjab and uh, rajasthan they had to escape from the war from the attacks of the muslims so one part of the population uh, went to the southern parts of the country to the inside of uh, india but there were also people who left india and they started a journey uh, to to escape from the war and this is how they came to um, first to the byzantine empire uh, in 11th century and then they were uh, staying there for approximately 150 years and then they took a lot of words in their language so the roma actually are indians who were speakers of different dialects or different languages 
but uh, from those languages which exist now nowadays in india two languages are very two languages are very close to romani this is hindi and punjabi there are a lot of similarities there are a lot of uh, words which still remain from sanskrit prakrit hindi and punjabi languages yeah so uh approximately 70 to 80 percent from the vocabulary in romani is actually coming from indian languages and of course there are a lot of uh, influences from other languages like greek language like uh, romanian language and uh, slavic languages but the basis is indian and uh, in india during that period on the end of ninth century and uh, beginning of the 10th century uh, the roma belonged to a group which was called Brom. so uh, after that from that group uh, the, the these uh, indians divided into three groups the first group was called dom and they remained in arabic world and today uh, they speak a language which is called domavren domari and the name of the group is Dom. There is a second group which came to Byzantine Empire. They are called Rom, and uh, the language is called Romani. And there is a third group which went to Central Asia, to countries like Uzbekistan, uh, Tataristan, Tajikistan, and etc., etc. And they are called Lom, or Luli, Luri, and their language is uh, called Lomavren. Uh, so, from that group of Indians, we uh, got three uh, different groups, but the speakers of Romani are only the Roma. And actually, they preserved the biggest part of the Indian uh, languages, yeah, the, the basis from Indian languages. So, uh, the name Gypsy came to this group of people a little bit late approximately around the 14th century because uh, they were moving from Byzantine Empire to Central Europe and to West Europe and when they came to England uh, and the people were asking them uh, where are you coming from uh, they were saying a name which was existing in the Byzantine Empire which was called Little Egypt and they were saying that they are coming from Egypt and the English people started to call them Egyptians. From uh, that word Egyptians, later, um, the first sound A uh, disappeared and they became gypsies. So uh, this is how the name was given from the outside world. But actually among themselves, they call themselves Roma and uh, yeah they keep a lot from the roma uh, from the indian languages and indian culture even still nowadays after 10th century when they left the country what are the lifestyle habits that uh, roma uh, community uh, live with uh, live with it itself like uh, the culture thing uh, marriage rituals and uh, death rituals or uh, anything like those so yeah then uh, in, in indian society this concept of purity it's very uh, strong uh, actually this is uh, maybe the the most important thing in the cultural in the culture of roma which remained from india in uh, from india and uh, among the roma everything is poor uh, clean or dirty and uh, there are things uh, which are not accepted in the roma culture because they are dirty and they are not allowed of course so this is uh, uh, one of the important things the marriage the marriage is uh, very much uh, close to the marriage uh, in india and uh, especially now with the all indian uh, movies from bollywood and uh, all the fantastic songs and dances so the roma somehow start to bring all these songs and dances and traditions 
uh, with candles everywhere, with Hina on the uh, hands of the... Mendy, uh, Mendy, Mendy. Yeah, and uh, also they have this uh, bindis. And uh, very often they, they have these uh, uh, traditional uh, costumes for, for the young boy and for the young girl when they get married. Uh, so the Indian traditional costumes. So uh, this is one of the things which remain. Um, Roman nowadays are uh, uh, having different uh, religion. They can be Christian, Orthodox Christians, Catholic Christians, or Evangelic Christians, uh, or they can be Muslims. And, uh, but nevertheless, uh, in both groups, Christians and Muslims, uh, there are certain um, traditions regarding the that how uh, the, uh, what is the attitude to the dead person, uh, the respect and how he should be buried and etc and etc. So there are there are all those beliefs uh, which exist in uh, Indian culture about the dead person uh, still uh, remaining among the Roma communities in one form or in another. So this uh, relationship between Roma and India still exists although that they left India 10 centuries ago, still the connections uh, are very much uh, there. And especially when there are Indian films in Euro, nowadays um, all the famous Indian uh, artists are well-known, singers are well-known in Europe among the Roma communities. And um, they, they, uh, the, the songs immediately get very much popular and uh, they are even trying to translate uh, some of the lyrics into Romani or adapt them into Romani using the same melody and using the same uh, music. So uh, those uh, connections are still very, very strong, I could say. Yeah. In culture, sir, you said that uh, some things are accepted and some thing are, things are not accepted in Roma uh, culture. What are those things? Very few, if you can mention. Well, uh, I didn't mention it by purpose because there are, uh, you know, those taboo topics uh, about uh, the women and uh, what she is allowed uh, and what she is not allowed to do after the birth of the child in the period when she has menstruation cycle and all those things. And uh, those things are uh, still uh, uh, existing. And for example, one of the very important things is that the clothes still in, almost in all Roma communities, the men and the women clothes are never uh, washed together. So the, the, the yeah, uh, it's impossible, uh, you know, the, to, to mix them and to wash them together because of this belief that uh, of uh, what is clean, what is dirty, what is polluted, what is uh, clean. So this kind of thing still exist. Yes. Uh, when I was doing a uh, little bit uh, research or browsing about uh, articles on Roma culture, I even heard, uh, I even read that uh, Roma are the untouchables of uh, Europe. Is this true? Uh, anything? Well, to some extent, yes, because uh, the name which was given in Byzantine Empire, uh, which is very popular in Europe, Tsigan, uh, Tsigani, Tsigoiner in different languages, actually comes from the Greek uh, word Atsinganoi, which uh, in the Byzantine Empire, the meaning of the word Atsinganoi was uh, uh, untouchable or someone with whom you shouldn't get in touch because you will get polluted. You will, your soul will be dirty. So this is what the uh, Greek community in that period, some uh, eight centuries, nine centuries ago, uh, gave us a name to the Roma when they came from uh, uh, India. Actually, in that period, they were not yet uh, Roma. They were just Indians because they became Roma uh, when they started to get uh, words and uh, cultural elements from other languages and other uh, cultures. For example, first when they came to Armenia, they adapted a few words from Armenian language and they adapted also the Christianity uh, in Armenia 
but in Greece, they adapted a lot uh, from the Greek culture and Greek language. So all this combination of Indian languages and uh, the contact languages like Armenian, Greek, and etc. Actually, those uh, combination made uh, from Indian people Roma. Uh, so they, they uh, the Romani language doesn't exist actually in India. Maybe you know that. There is no such a thing, Romani language, in India. But uh, this uh, language was created outside of India. When the uh, Indians were traveling from uh, India, escaping from the war and coming to Europe, when all these different dialects and languages started to communicate and the people started to communicate between themselves, and uh, there was created something like a lingua franca because they were speakers of different languages and different dialects, Indian languages and Indian dialects. So they found some kind of uh, common uh, way to communicate. And uh, together with this common way of communication using all these uh, Indian languages, uh, the influence from Greek, from Armenian and from Romanian and Slavic languages actually formed Romani language and all Roma dialects which exist nowadays in Europe. In every community or in every uh, ethnicity or race, there is always a turning point for them, which is a, which changes everything for them. So is there, is there any turning point uh, for Roma community which completely changed their life and future generations? Anything, uh, have you ever come uh, in your studies or research, anything like that? Well, I have to say that in uh, mid-centuries, in 14th, 15th, 16th, 17th century, the Roma were not accepted because the Catholic Church was uh, thinking that uh, the Roma women are witches and they were uh, yeah, killed and burnt on the uh, fire sticks and uh, it was, uh, yeah, the, the Catholic Church did a huge persecution to the Roma. But uh, the biggest tragedy in the Roma history is the Nazi time, when the Nazis uh, killed almost uh, most of the half of, most of the half of the Roma population during the Second World War in the concentration camps and uh, after that maybe uh, the Roma realized how uh, the outside world could be dangerous for them and maybe this was the turning point when they started to get more united in order to fight all forms of discrimination and racism which still exist in uh, Europe nowadays and not only in Europe unfortunately but also outside of Europe, in the United States, in Latin American countries, in Russia and uh, in, you know, Turkey and in Central Asia. So, um, Roma are still very much discriminated. Roma are still very much not accepted in the society. Uh, they are blamed for all the bad things which happens in the society. For example, now with the coronavirus, Roma are blamed that they are bringing the coronavirus, they are spreading the coronavirus, and uh, which is quite strange and quite funny in a way, but uh, <clears throat> this is uh, what, what uh, most of the societies in Europe think, and uh, there is this very bad attitude towards Roma, discrimination and persecution and uh, police brutality and uh, attacks by skinheads and neo-Nazis, uh, nowadays, uh, this is very, very common that neo-Nazi groups attack the Roma communities, burn their houses or destroy their houses, and still the governments don't do anything uh, to stop it. And uh, uh, all these uh, developments in Europe actually brought Roma to the point to realize that they have to be united between themselves from all European countries and to fight to some, somehow these this forms of racism and discrimination and attacks and the persecution because there is no other way to, to go further with this uh, discrimination and racism, yeah. Uh, have you ever uh, felt in your observation or Roma community have ever felt that Indian government or India has ever uh, interfered uh, anywhere to help uh, Roma community economically or any other way? Or 
unfortunately, no. Uh, actually, there is this uh, big Roma organization which is called International Roman Union, and uh, I was uh, serving as a secretary general of the International Roman Union between the year of 2000 to t 2004. And then in 2000, we visited uh, India and we met with the Prime Minister of India during that time, with the Minister of Culture, and we wanted uh, somehow Indian government to recognize the Roma like diaspora, uh, you know, like people who came from India to Europe, that like we are Indians, but uh, the Indian government that time was not so much uh, ready, prepared uh, to take any actions like that, I'm afraid, and uh, nothing happened. But until now, uh, we see that uh, still this, uh, um, there is no any kind of actions or protections from the side of Indian government about Roma in Europe. And uh, there is no any kind of uh, help even when they see that there is uh, attacks and uh, persecution and etc. and etc. All these discriminations and racism which increases in uh, Europe. Unfortunately, the Indian government uh, doesn't take any actions. And uh, maybe the very first thing what should be done here is that the Indian government to recognize Roma like Indians, you know, and then uh, maybe we will uh, have kind of protection even on documents because now we are the biggest minority of Europe uh, without any country, without uh, any uh, background country. And, uh, everyone knows that the Roma came from India, but actually when there is no any kind of support from Indian government, you know, this, um, uh, the, the, Roma communities actually uh, ha have all those uh, problems and conflicts. Although that uh, Romas are uh, members and they are citizens of their own countries. For example, I have the double citizenship, German and um, Bulgarian, but uh, still uh, in Bulgaria, for example, uh, it is very much okay and accepted if the Roma communities are attacked by the uh, skinheads or uh, neo-Nazis and if the houses of the uh, Roma are destroyed or the, the Roma are killed, then the government doesn't take any actions, you know. There is no any kind of uh, uh, reaction from the governmental side that, okay, these are our citizens. I mean, they are citizens, they have the citizenship of our country and we have to protect them. There is no such a responsibility. There is no such a fe feeling of uh, responsibility by the governments uh, towards Roma, unfortunately. On official documents, yes, it is written that uh, we are Europeans, we are um, uh, members uh, of uh, European Union and all these uh, countries, and we are citizens, and etc., and etc. But in reality, the situation is totally different. I'm afraid. Why the why the discrimination is there? I Means I know that a certain community belongs from outside of Europe, but uh, the basis of discrimination is color or uh, not being of Europe or what is exact? Well, the reason of the in most of the cases, the reason of the discrimination is the color of the skin. Even if you are highly highly educated and integrated, and you know. <clears throat> quite normal, uh, still you are not accepted and you are treated unequally um, and there is no any other reason. Of course, uh, there are those uh, negative attitudes towards the Roma culture, Roma language, this is also true. And uh, so, yeah, the basis for the discriminations are the skin color and the cultural background of the Roma. But uh, yeah, how they can uh forget their language and culture even if you forget your language and culture but you look like roma in europe you are still discriminated you know even if you are 100 percent assimilated uh you are still discriminated because you look differently and especially nowadays all these uh 
neo-Nazi movements increase in Europe, unfortunately. You know? Any any book that uh, will you will love to recommend uh, to people uh, about Roma culture history, which you love the most? Well, there are a lot of publications, uh, including by some of the uh, Roma, uh, some of the Indian authors who wrote books about Roma culture. Uh, there is Dr. Shashi, for example, he is very famous in uh, uh, India. He wrote uh, several books about Roma and Roma culture and Roma history. He was visiting uh, Europe and uh, um, the other authors, I cannot uh, remember the, the names, but uh, uh, Professor Lokesh Chandra, I think he has some uh, articles, but not book, unfortunately. And uh, yeah, there was uh, uh, one very famous guy whose name was Rishi, and uh, he published some uh, dictionaries, grammar books, and uh, so he's also, uh, his publications are known in India, and we know them in Europe as well. And we use them for our research and uh, comparative studies with, between Indian and uh, Indian languages and Romani. Um, I cannot remember any other. Okay, okay, it's totally fine. Uh, economically, uh, how can uh, Roma culture, uh, sorry, how can Roma community thrive? And uh, preservation of Roma culture, uh, how you see these two things and their future? Well, uh, some of the Roma communities uh, actually developed uh, the Roma culture to such a level that they started to leave uh, from the Roma culture. For example, making music, dancing, uh, 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 playing in theaters or in restaurants, I mean musicians. Uh, there are uh, Roma Smiths still in Europe uh, who are uh, functioning and working and uh, but in most of the cases uh, Roma communities in Europe are poor. Um, unfortunately the educational level of Roma in Europe is not so high. Uh, still um, <clears throat> the last uh, 30, 40 years after the democratic changes in Europe the, the situation started to change but still uh, large Roma communities are with very low education and uh, the racism which exists in, uh, uh, in Europe towards Roma is one of the other biggest uh, obstacle for the Roma to get uh, better education because many Roma children are uh, sent to uh, special schools, schools for mentally retarded children because uh, in some cases the children don't speak the official language and uh, the teachers consider them like mentally retarded if they don't speak the official language of the country. And uh, all those um, factors actually put Roma in a very bad situation economically. Um, of course there are some rich Roma as well, but unfortunately there are not so many and uh, there is no something like uh, Roma uh, factories or um, uh, Roma corporations or uh, anything like that uh, in, in Europe. Unfortunately, there are no those kind of things. And uh, yeah, the economical situation, I would say it's, it's not, not the best one uh, of this group uh, in Europe. You just mentioned a few minutes back that you were uh, the secretary of an international organization. So what do you feel uh, that organization or international Roma organization? I clearly don't remember the name you mentioned, yeah. you, which, which you were the secretary. Uh, are they taking any best efforts uh, to uh, for uh, what you feel that they must do? Means anything like that? Well, the International Romani Union actually for um, last... Um, uh, approximately 50 years uh, did uh, a lot, mainly to bring the Roma issue and the Roma question to international institutions like uh, Council of Europe, European Commission, UNESCO, UNICEF, United Nations, and etc. Et that uh, the Roma were 
uh, first of all, acknowledged, recognized, and accepted as a uh, as the biggest minority of Europe. So um, after the Second World War, the Nazis, the Ger uh, I mean the Germans, didn't uh, recognize the uh, that the Roma were persecuted by the Nazis, that they were killed because of this that they are Roma, and uh, the this organization was also trying to uh, organize that uh, the Roma are recognized as victims of the Nazi regime and that they get some compensation for this uh, after 1980s. So uh, the, the organization did uh, many different uh, uh, activities, but mainly it had uh, this political role uh, in uh, bringing the Roma problem, Roma issue to high level institutional institutions international institutions as i already mentioned you are also a writer and uh, you have even wrote uh, history of uh, roma a book i want to know uh, the how you got uh, that idea in your mind to write that book well uh, actually at the beginning when i wa when i started my career i wanted only to work in the field of uh, language, linguistics, yeah? But uh, it's impossible because uh, uh, when you uh, become uh, famous in one area as a scientist, as a researcher, as a university professor, then the people start to ask you all kinds of questions uh, regarding the culture, regarding the history. And then I uh, realized that there are not so many Roma on such a level in Europe who are doing uh, this kind of research on the history, culture and uh, language. And uh, then uh, I started to do more, more, more research on uh, this issue. I visited different archives, different libraries, the Royal Library of Sweden in Stockholm, the Royal Library of the Netherlands, uh, the Ottoman archives in Istanbul, in Turkey. Uh, I was working in the Bundesarchiv here in Germany, in Berlin. The Nazi, the, 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 I was looking through the documents of one Nazi guy uh, regarding the history and to what happened to Roma during the Nazi time. So, yeah, this is uh, how it happened. I mean, uh, when you are working on the language, you have to explain some of the phenomenon, what happened, how happened, and uh, if you are a good professional, you really have to do the work more seriously, and this is how I got the motivation to investigate also the history and the culture, and even I did something very important, which no one until now did, I was collecting Roma songs, uh, which the Roma created in the Auschwitz and other uh, concentration camps, during the Second World War. So, and I'm trying to do some analysis of these songs. And um, another thing what I do regarding the culture, it's uh, I'm trying to collect uh, songs dedicated to the dead people. There are, in some Roma communities, um, the, there is such a tradition that the, uh, there is a person who is coming and singing a song uh, to the dead people and uh, or they are creating uh, songs texts uh, for songs for a dead person and that uh, this is uh, you know very little known and not so much research is done on this and i'm trying to collect all those things and to preserve them and to show them to the further future generation generations and um, yeah to bring more knowledge to the society in general when I was uh, reading about you, sir, uh, on Wikipedia, I understood that you were very successful to bring Roma language in Bulgaria. Yeah. Uh, how you did that, this amazing thing? Well, at the beginning, uh, this happened after the democratic changes in Bulgaria, after 1990. Until 1990, Bulgaria was uh, having a communist uh, regime. And uh, after that, there was this... Um, uh, 
change new government and they wanted to give the uh, minority groups the possibility uh, that the Roma children, uh, the minority children uh, learn their languages in the schools. And this was also with the Turkish minority and with the Roma minority. And for the time being, that time, I was the most educated Roma guy in the country. So there was no anyone else. Uh, I had uh, my university degree, bachelor, and I had I was doing my second master degree in psycholinguistics at the Sofia University. And uh, yeah, they contacted me and they invited me. And then I started first with uh, writing textbooks in Romani language. Then we organized uh, through the Ministry of Education um, language courses for Roma to become teachers of Romani. And uh, I continued to publish a lot on Romani language and textbooks and children's books and etc. And then there was um, a possibility to open a new program at the, at the university, in one of the universities in Bulgaria, to prepare uh, teachers for primary classes and at the same time to teach Romani language. But because of the changes of the system in the university and because of the growth of the Nazi movement, neo-Nazi movement in Bulgaria, uh, that program was uh, unfortunately uh, closed down. So uh, then I got a position in Slovakia and I was doing this in Slovakia. Now I am in Germany. I'm trying to do this in Germany and in Poland. So yeah, this is how it happened. Second last question and then I am going to wrap up. When you look back uh, so many decades uh, behind about your struggle and success and your beginning, how you feel about that journey? Uh, can you share anything beautiful from that? Well, I had uh, good luck uh, to meet uh, some of the famous uh, experts and to work with them, uh, experts on uh, Romani language and Roma history and culture. And uh, from other side in Bulgaria, I was uh, also very much uh, close to uh, two Bulgarian professors, three Bulgarian professors uh, who were very famous and uh, they were very much interested in uh, Romani uh, language. Uh, so uh, there were people who were inspiring me. They were, there were people who were provoking me. Uh, mm -hmm. For example, one of them was uh, Professor Milena Hupšmanova from the Charles University in uh, Prague, in Czech Republic. And the other one was uh, Professor Ian Hancock uh, from the University of Texas in Austin, uh, in United States. So these people were uh, changing my life uh, to some extent with their uh, knowledge and with their uh, uh, provoking me to learn more, to study more and uh, to reach uh, new levels and uh, so uh, yeah actually without those kind of people I think I wouldn't be so much motivated to do this job and uh, not only motivated but also to uh, feel happy that uh, I had the possibility to learn from them and to be happy with the communication which we had between us the friendship and uh, I did not. I did learn not only uh, science from them, but uh, the most important thing, which I think it's important for everyone. I did learn uh, from them to be a normal human being, a normal man, normal man, normal person uh, who tries to understand everyone and to help and uh, to do things uh, in such a way that. Uh, the people feel uh, happy uh, with, with the things which I am doing for them. Yes, I think this is it. Last question. Do you have any question to me? Okay. Uh, my question is, I don't know so much about Dalits and maybe okay. uh, this would be mm. my question. Do you think okay. that between the Dalits and Roma there are common things? 
Okay, so uh, yes, it is exactly very common when you told about uh, Roma that uh, uh, coming close to them is was like uh, getting impure, and this this similarity is in Dalits also. Uh, like for example, if you go to uh, Peshwa period in Maharashtra, uh, they made a system that. Uh, Uh, even a dalit shadow if it uh, gets on uh, brahmin hand or any uh, person from varna system he gets impure and he must bath and he must uh, he must do prayers and all and uh, even uh, dalits were not even allowed to uh, marriage also to do marriage with uh, kshatriyas that is warrior class merchant class uh, brahmin means uh, priest class so this was the thing and uh, especially about the word dalit it uh, the word was i think so from my information was coined by mahatma jyotiba phule he was one of the social uh, revolutionary in india uh, the people who who are in uh, dal 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 means uh, marsh marsh marshy land marshy area they from that uh, the word dal uh, dalit came Uh, and uh, the one of the most revolutionary persons in india after uh, mahatma jyotiba phule and many more people was dr bhimrao ambedkar he belonged from dalit uh, uh, community only who uh, like uh, you how you were chosen to do something for uh, roma language in bulgaria he was the person who led uh, the dalit movement ahead so that uh, scheduled caste uh, other backward classes and uh, minorities muslims they get a representation in india uh, including uh, hindu women uh, which uh, uh, comes uh, in the varna system actually their life becomes very easy so dr ambedkar made sure to write a beautiful constitution based on liberty equality and fraternity and give everyone the equal rights and uh, uh, the uh, uh, the worst thing was that uh, dalits uh, uh, dalits uh, itself uh, today some don't know about their own history and iron uh, the ironically i feel that uh, the since the country become independent we uh, your caste system and dalit uh, system has not uh, been able to abolished by most of the unfortunate governments and our own leader so this is about dalit and uh, to in today's world uh, in contemporary uh, world uh, the millennials actually if you speak with them about dalit issues they say that oh they it is just a uh, imaginary thing now and there are many more issues to talk about uh, and they feel that uh, okay you have got reservation in education um, in education and that's uh, in civil services also then your question is finished and there is no need to talk about it right now so this is all about dalit uh, dalit uh, situations there are like uh, for example uh, brahmins kshatriyas uh, vaishyas and shudras like these are the four varnas and below the avarna means those who don't belong from them were the dalits so this is overall thing yeah, there is uh, in detail uh, you can find in dr uh, ambedkar books uh, including also mahatma jyotirao phule also so this is about the list so that much only okay thank you very much thanks a lot and uh, it was my uh, fortune that i you gave your time and you are a really humble person a ground to earth person uh, not everybody are able to give their time uh, for such beautiful talks and uh, i say to people please subscribe this channel uh, share this interview video and you can know about sir from wikipedia and he has done a lot of work he has uh, wrote many books uh, you can even read that to know about roma community and thanks sir a lot for giving your time to vaman matters uh, have a great day ahead and be safe from covid 19 and thanks a lot people keep watching vaman matters thank you very much namaste thank you, thank you. namaste namaste namaste, namaste.